Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Delicate Medical Fitness. Please like, comment and subscribe. And today I will tell you about my fat story. So today we will talk about how I was big girl, what was wrong with me, all the different problems, my relationship with food. And then there will be two other videos. One will be about how I lost the weight and another one will be how I maintained the uh, weight that I lost yeah so at my biggest I was 96 kilos you can see the pictures that's fifth just over 15 stone and that was the maximum weight so I did fluctuate a bit between like 80 to 90 so I was actually size between 20 to 22 then it was like at some points I had a bit of 18 clothes but generally it was around around size 20 UK yeah then also you know it's a bit of a nowadays people say all this fact acceptance fat positivity body positivity you know it was a bit of a delusion yeah so you kind of lie to yourself that everything is fine I had a lot of different problems I'm going to go through them so you know obviously I haven't been always this fit and healthy so it's also I had my journey so you can understand where I have come from and what I had to deal with and that also to encourage you that everything is possible to change and you don't need to deal with these problems again in your life in future if you wish to help yourself so to say so at my when I was when I was fat as 96 kilos and even a bit lower I had a lot of health problems yeah so my I had a lot of indigestion and heartburn so I was taking soda bicarbonate and all this omeprazole and ranitidine for the for the stomach you know because it was really really uncomfortable anything that I would eat I would have heartburn and then digestion so it's kind of it repeats on you so then also uh, my blood pressure was ha quite high it was over 140 over 100 the diastolic so they also they wanted to put me on blood pressure meds to reduce the blood pressure I didn't take them I was really really young then still I was just over 20 and then um, also lower back pain a, lo a lot of lower back pain in addition to my weight I also have a fusion on my back since birth on the right side the pelvic the pelvic bone uh, has fused with the vertebrae on, right si on the right side so it causing in a little bit of a disalignment in my back even my left leg is a little bit shorter and then with the extra weight that I had, I was just in constant pain with the back. Yeah, it even got to a point where I was waking up at night and couldn't sleep. The back pain was really keeping me up, awake, waking me up. It was quite, it, it was really disaster. And then I also was put on medication for the back pain that was tramadol it was really really strong painkiller then a little bit of I'll tell you about the side effects from that so I was on also at that point I was also on another medication which was um, amitriptyline that's also for uh, the pain then together with the tramadol I don't know if it's together or if it's just the tramadol but after taking the tramadol a few weeks in I had really bad pains in my finger joints yeah so that was started to keep me up at night and it was like feeling like I'm developing arthritis in in my hands and I went back to the doctors they tested out the arthritis markers in the blood they said there's nothing there so obviously it was the side effects from the medication that I was prescribed so I stopped taking the medication for the lower back pain but that was very close to the time when I actually also started to 
work with myself and, and start to control my weight and start to do some yoga. So that all kind of helped me to stop taking the medication. Yeah. Then I also had mid-back pain, so just where the bra strap is. So that was to do with also because I was I had weight, so I had really large breasts. I had that double D, so all that the posture was really bad. It was pulling me forward, so my back was quite rounded. So all that was giving me a lot of pain in my mid back as well. Then knee pain, very bad knee pain I had. So also when I would have to bend my knees or go up the stairs, there was like really sharp stabbing like pain yeah then also when i came to the uk yeah i had to work all these long hour shifts 14 12 hour shifts i was doing in the care home always on the feet so my feet were so sore that i had to come back home and soak them actually in cool water to give at least some kind of relief at the soles at the bottom of the soles as well because of the rubbing with the extra weight it's actually giving you pain on the on the feet as well due to the rubbing yeah then there is one thing what people don't really like to talk it's a bit intimate yeah but that's chafing sores yeah so when the ties are too fat and they rub together that create sores in between the legs, between the thighs, yeah, near your groin. And that can be really painful and uncomfortable. So every time you would walk, that chafing comes back because the skin hasn't healed properly. So then it's either you wear always trouser, trousers or you wear some leggings under. So it's not really a nice thing and it's also really painful. And But that's completely has gone now since I lost weight, yeah, so... Then since childhood I had eczema, so I was, when I was little, when I was a little child, three, four, five, six, I was covered with it, all my body was covered, yeah, I had it everywhere, yeah, it was, I was kind of used to it, you know, I was dealing with it quite, quite well, as much as you can, because you, you kind of, people used to ask, oh, is it not hurting you, because all the hands were sore, and there was like big sores, big cracks in there, but you kind of get used to that kind of pain. And then slowly, slowly, as uh, as I grew up, it left my body, but it remained on my hands and on my face. I had it around my mouth, around my eyes. And that only completely gone since I lost weight and then became healthy lifestyle, yeah. Then also, I had liver issues, you see, so there is a plethora of different things that people can have, yeah, and they are greatly related with the extra weight, what we had, yeah, so with regards to liver issues, there was, I, I went to the GP, it was here in the, in the UK, I was around 32, and then the GP tested uh, my liver, and the, the liver test was not good at all yeah so they thought even that it was a mistake they wanted to test again but i knew it was it was oh it was right so same way fatty liver disease we can get from unhealthy food same way as alcohol when i was younger i was also drinking quite a lot of alcohol so i now i don't drink at all yeah so that has that obviously takes a bit of time to regenerate on the liver but everything you know regenerates as long as there is not too much damage and the age also helped because I started my health journey when I was 30 yeah? and now I'm 40 so I have been on on this journey for last 10 years now yeah and then I also have PCSO so that's polycystic ovary syndrome so when I was younger I had really irregular periods and infertility comes with the PCSOs and also weight gain so it is harder to lose weight because of the with the of the imbalances with the hormones and it's also harder to keep the weight off but please you know don't be discouraged because you know any illness is made worse so to say with extra weight so please be encouraged to lose weight to make your situation better as you understand what the 
condition does to you what are the effects if it's obviously if it's making you crave more food you know that that's the condition so you have better tools to manage yeah your diet and your healthy lifestyle so until a little bit about the history until i was like 17 i was normal weight i also gone gym you know so my china also wanted me to do professional training but i wasn't ready for it and then i started you know started to put on weight to really unhealthy measures i will also be adding pictures as i said and then the weight stayed up until i obviously took measures until i was 30 so i had the I was overweight for good 12 years and all this you know when you climb climb up the stairs and you're you're breathless I was like my grandmother yeah my grandparents they live back home in Latvia so they live on the fourth floor there's no lift back home so they go up and down every day yeah so my nan has some heart issues and stuff she doesn't she wasn't so much out of breath uh, as I was at age of just over 20, so that's something, you know, not, not quite right. But it's quite amazing how we live in denial, yeah? So how we actually say, no, that it is okay, you know, that there's other health issues that is causing it, that it's not yourself. It's not quite like that, yeah? So, you know, the relationship as well, you know, the, when I was growing up, there was times that... You just couldn't get certain foods like meat was rare to get and you could only get it if you know somebody it wasn't like readily available in the in the shops here you know when I was growing up chocolates wasn't a thing so that was like only later when I was was a teenager all those fizzy drinks juices wasn't a thing my my family used to make uh, different you know juices you know and jams themselves you know from from the garden that we had and that was quite nice but i never was into that kind of sweet stuff when i was when i was young so that kind of helped me but it just, just shows you that it is also the condition but then when i came to the uk that was a quite different thing so i also retained the weight here and i also put a little bit more on because all of the availability of different chocolates of different foods different biscuits chicken and chips like we don't have no takeaways back home back in the days yeah so there was when i was like a late teenager there was one pizza shop in my town and mcdonald's was only in the capital city so that wasn't something that is readily available Whereas here with all the plethora of different things, you obviously you want to try everything and you haven't had it. So it's all new to you. So that also doesn't help with that. Everything is just so readily available. You know, I like to compare uh, the food addiction with drug addiction. Yes. Yeah? So you see like with drug addiction, that's easier because you don't need to consume the drugs once you have given up, uh, up that addiction yeah whereas with food you still have to eat however you have to choose the right way right foods to actually consume yeah so that's about the history and all the different problems that i had so next next time i will talk about what made me lose the weight so what made how i came to that kind of realization and when that happened and how i done it so hope this helps somebody as well to inspire them and i'll see you next week again hope you have a lovely week ahead take care bye